Hi. My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and, and you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald is a show where you learn something new. It's a show for the courageous and want to be engaged. A show where we discuss any issues that affect the lives of people. And the show where we take inventory of our lives and decisions. Welcome to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. Welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fisher, the show that you like because for you, we're also the show of the people, for the people, by the people, for all people. Uh, you have embarked upon the second fat, excuse me, the second holiday bazaar show of 2018. And um, the topic of our show today is um, called Just Answer the Question. Just Answer the Question. We're going to divulge back into the world of um, good communication behavior. And uh, here on the set that I have to be a part of this dynamic conversation is uh, Tracy Simone. She's a professional model and actress. I want to welcome you to the Kansas Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald set. Ms. Simone, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm very happy to have you here, Ms. Simone. Uh, well, my first question, well, first of all, you, you've, been in, you've been modeling for some time. Quite some time. How long have you been modeling? <laughs> I don't know exactly, but it's over 30 years. Over 30 years. Absolutely. Now, what, what are some of the highlights of your modeling career? Well, um, I started as a model when I was in college, and I had opportunities to do a lot of things, uh, billboards and greeting cards and things like that, things for corporations. Um, so probably I would say the biggest highlights, some of the biggest highlights, I did a commercial for Lincoln Mercury in Boston quite wow. a few years ago done quite a bit of television as an actress um a lot of runway little of everything i think i owned a pageant at one point i taught modeling at one point amazing yeah i've been around for a while so you've probably been in some really nice um fashion magazines as well i've been in some magazines i've been mm -hmm. in i've been in a little of everything <laughs> have you had some covers i've not have any, had any cover i have online but not not mm -hmm. physical i heard recently you were um you were you had a, a part where you were in uh, the production power that's correct that's amazing that has not aired yet but okay. i was on power yes uh, about three weeks ago maybe that that we filmed it so that was a good experience that was an excellent experience a okay. lot of fun a lot of fun a lot of fun yeah what do you like best about acting it's just different you never know what they're going to ask you to do so it's not like a regular day at the office every time you show up you have to bring different things. You have to show up at different times. You work with different people, different mm -hmm. crews, different, um, you know, other actors and actresses. You, you really don't know. Sometimes you're a nurse. Sometimes you're a detective. Sometimes you're a patient. Sometimes it could be anything. It's very exciting. So it's, huh? it's exciting. It's really interesting. Exciting and I imagine very flexible. You have to be extremely you have flexible. To be very flexible. Very which is flexible. which is which is great. I'm happy to have you because I know you have quite a lot of experience um, to offer the viewing audience. Um, in the acting world, there's quite a lot of communication Absolutely. in the acting world <laughs> and how you, and also a focus on how you convey, uh, the communication, like how you, how you, how you speak and right. how you read lines and how you deliver lines Correct. and things of that sort. And whether when you speak, you're believable, right. you know, whether you're in character, you're believable. And so I know you, you bring some really interesting points to the table, um, I would ask you, do you think that the way two people interact? when they're communicating is, in, is important. Absolutely it is. So whether you're on camera or in real life, it's mm -hmm. very important how you interact with another individual. So if you are acting, certainly you need to be believable, like you said, um, and you have, to, you have to put yourself in the situation of the character that they give you. But even in real life, right, it's very important that you interact appropriately with other individuals so that people understand that you have integrity, that you mean what you say, that you're interested truly in what they're asking or what they're talking about. It's very important to have appropriate communication. That's interesting because a lot, a lot can um, be fathomed from the type of communication you have. I think that a relationship can be built is based on how you interact, the decision to to, to be in a relationship or to stay in a relationship has a lot to do with the way both people communicate to one another. Absolutely. I, would I, would, 
I would think that there should be a certain level of respect in terms of when you address another person and when you communicate with another person and that, like I, and then also be able to see things from the perspective of the other person, you know, like the more you understand that person, I think it's a lot easier for you to communicate well with them. I agree. And hopefully the person you're communicating with is being honest and open and allows you to communicate with them properly. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you may get in a relationship with someone based on something that's false mm -hmm. and then not find out until later. So Right, right. You know, so interesting. We always have a control of, over how we respond Correct. to things and how what, how we respond to how we're communicated to. You know, you know, we have a, an agency of how we discipline ourselves or control ourselves Absolutely. In, in, in our communication, which is, which is something that's really important. Um, you know, describe the world that you live in. What, what, is, what is Tracy Simone's real world? <laughs> well, Tracy Simone <laughs> actually has a full-time job. I'm a mom also, have a house. Um, I do my regular job. I get up every morning, do my regular job, and then I'm an actress and model part-time. So I kind of juggle all of that together. I'm still making dinner. I'm still traveling to the different jobs and things, but I still have a corporate situation every day. I have a job that I It's amazing with. how you balance everything. It's tricky sometimes. The personal, uh, the professional, the, the business, everything. There's a lot yeah, a lot going on. So sometimes it's, you know, take a day off to go do a modeling job or an acting job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's working at night on my regular job to kind of make up for what I miss during the day. A lot of, it is a lot of juggling. I know in the, in, in the arts entertainment industry, it is very important what you say in front of cameras. Absolutely. Like how you talk in front of the camera um, and how you, your, the behaviors you have when you're communicating with people Correct. in front of the cameras. Because I think people have a way of perceiving you, Absolutely. you know, and drawing conclusions about you. You know, I'm sure like every word, like let's say if you're on a set and you're doing some acting and you know, everything that comes out your mouth is really being critiqued. Absolutely. Right. So everything you say has a bearing upon it. They're evaluating the way you're acting, whether you're in character, whether or not you're really right. playing the role well and effectively, or you're giving the director what the director's asking of you. Correct. Yeah. And I guess in, in, in real life, um, you know, people make perceptions about how people are, their character, based on <laughs> the way you talk to a person or the way you, you, you respond to when a person talks to you. You Absolutely. know, uh, people make de make decisions about people's character, Absolutely. I would imagine. That's human nature to, yeah, it's, it's so, it's so to right. take in what you observe from someone. So whether it's a professional situation or even if it's just day to day, if you right. see people, you form opinions based on what you see, the, observe, the behavior that you observed. Mm -hmm. uh, you make mental notes, of course, that's just a human thing to kind of watch other people. But right. especially if you're in, a, in the entertainment industry or any kind of modeling, acting, any of that kind of stuff where the camera's rolling, mm -hmm. you can't take it back. Right. And people are absolutely watching. So even with an online presence, which online is a it's really strong tool for marketing yourself, People have to be very, very careful what they post out there, what they put out there, because you can't roll it back. Right. It's there forever, right? Absolutely. And I guess even in the political realm, too, when you communicate in front of the camera, it, it, there's a bearing upon how you shape the minds of people and how they perceive you. Absolutely. I guess you can, you can either like uh, win voters or lose voters by the things that you say That's on true. air publicly, right? That's true. It's very, very interesting. Um, how impactful can the media be in influencing a person's career in entertainment? Oh, very impactful. I mean, it is absolutely a tool and you can use it to your benefit or you could build up a career, build up your brand and then do one wrong thing and then wipe the whole thing out. And, and you know, so very interesting, powerful. I think the media plays such a strong role in that sometimes too, they can deliberately do things and and present information and stories a certain way. That's true. To destroy the person's career. Very true. And then sometimes it depends on the resiliency of this, the person's support and the resiliency of the person's brand that they've built, Absolutely. you know, over time. Because if you're in the arts and entertainment industry, there will be a time, there may be a time, something's gonna be, rep you're gonna be represented some way, possibly, um, whether it be through a photograph or a soundbite or a video or whatever, someone would just love to get a piece of it and 
and put it out there a certain way because it gets stories, it gets attention. That's correct. You know, so you ever see those pictures sometimes, like, you know, you can look at these magazines and they'll, they'll have the paparazzi go around. They take pictures of people when they're going shopping, you know, when they're, when they're at a grocery store or, you know, they'll have them looking with like different types of outfits and shabby and things like that. One time I saw on TV, they had, a, they ran video of an of a entertainer sleeping in a bed. You know, I'm like, why would you, why would you air that on a national television show of an entertainer sleeping in a bed snoring you know i'm like it's crazy so you know sometimes it's not even like the the person trying to represent themselves a bad way but it's just the fact that the media wants to have something to create a story to attract people whether you look good or they make you look good or whether you look bad either way you know that's very true. and so it that is so that's so so interesting um uh, with all your experience being in modeling for like at least 30 years, um, what advice would you give to a, a new model? Well, first piece of advice I always give to anyone starting out is please be very careful. Be very safe in the things that you do because a lot of people really, this is a very interesting, very exciting, <laughs> and you can make money. It's a, it's a very interesting career to have. Um, and there are people out there, though, who are out to prey on other people. And so there could be situations where you may pay for something you shouldn't pay for, or you get yourself in a situation with someone who portrays themselves as a photographer or an agent or something, and that's not really what they are. Some of the uh, modeling agencies may actually be escort services, things like that. They have to either be screened. You absolutely need to be very, very careful. And right now in the internet age, you know, there's really no excuse to get yourself in a position with someone who you're not familiar with or have not done a background check on. So a lot of it is networking. A lot of it is word of mouth. If you don't know someone who knows the person that you're about to deal with, don't deal with them. There are a lot of, a lot of agents or a lot of photographers, a lot of other models. I always recommend work with someone who's got more experience than you and kind of learn the ropes. Do the research. Absolutely. What, what advice would you give to um, actors in the acting industry? Really the same thing. It's very, very competitive. So understand the business, first of all, and understand that it is a business. It's actually a job. It's not just a fun thing that you do. Um, and understand that it's very, very competitive. So there are people there who are sometimes looking to, you know, not help you out, even though they are portraying themselves as someone who would. Well, I really appreciate those ideas. I want to thank you for being here at Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. We're about to take a break here at Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. I'll see you right after our station break.
welcome back to Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, the show that you like because it's for you. We're also the show of the people, for the people, by the people, for people. Uh, we have another guest uh, in the studio. Uh, Mr. Fred Max is here. He's a portrait photographer and a photographer. Hi. I want to thank you for being here at Candid Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald, Mr. Fred Max. Thank you. How are you today? I am well, thank you. That is very, very good to hear. So on this second uh, Holiday Bazaar episode of 2018, mm -hmm. we're divulging into the realm of communication and mm -hmm. um, behavior and communication and how important um, the, the behavior that, that people have in their communication, how important that is. You know. um, do you think that the way two people uh, interact when they're communicating is important? Always. Very important. Very. So what bearing does it have on, on the relationship or the two people based on the way they communicate? Well, well you all, are, we're always reacting to whatever else, to what we're dealt with. Mm -hmm. And the more we bring to a relationship, the more open we are, the more easy we are to communicate with, the more easy it is for people to communicate with us. Just like whether we're on time or not, right. whether we're prepared or not. The more we thought about something and the more the other person feels that they're prominent in your thoughts, the more likely they are to produce. Right. And There's so many things that happen when two people communicate. We're developing perspectives about mm -hmm. people through our observations. Mm -hmm. um, actually, sometimes we're transmitting our feelings, our emotions, the mm -hmm. way we communicate, you know. We can be showing um, respect or, or disrespect by the way we communicate. Hmm. Um, sometimes we have the ability to, to teach, to pass on information, to share knowledge when we communicate. So, I mean, communication is just so important. I just, and, and by having this show and entitling it, uh, Just Answer the Question, um, I really want us to kind of really think a little deeper about, you know, the way we communicate to each other and, and um, whether or not we're respectful, we're, we're humane in how we communicate with one another and how communication is purposeful. Like you can use communication in such a way where there could be a purposeful intent, either positive or negative. Well, humane and productive. Right. Meaning, or, or for that matter, synergistic. We could be so excited about something we both want to talk about that we both have more ideas than we thought we had mm -hmm. because we're more together than either one alone. Exactly. Now, I've seen your photography before, and mm -hmm. um, you're a very good photographer. I like your work. Um, Thank you. I see it is truly a passion. Of mm -hmm. course. Um, uh, you work with a lot of different creative elements uh, with photography. I've seen your portrait work, but mm -hmm. I know I, I, through talking with you, you expressed that you, you were, you're always a student of photography and, and oh, I try new things always. I take classes as recently as last week. I mm -hmm. took several hours worth of classes for years and years. Mm -hmm. You can take classes on lynda.com and you can learn how to do almost anything you want and it's, not, and it's reasonably priced. I enjoy that. I enjoy on a beautiful day going out and seeing some scenery and I'm into HDR, high definition. Okay. So I took pictures recently. Uh, anyway. Right. We're, we're looking at one of your photographs now on set of a, a, a model here. I guess that's Olivia. Yes. Um, and uh, she's on a, it looks like a, a winding staircase. And that's kind of juxtaposed her image. Okay. That okay. staircase is at the Yale Art Gallery on Chapel Street in New Haven. Okay. I went there and said, how could I take this picture so that I could have a person coming out of it? It would make an interesting background because your eye would keep going. Mm -hmm. I had her in my, at my place where I had all kinds of pillows and green screens and lighting and a whole lot going on so I could isolate her picture mm -hmm. and then toss it in there. Way beyond that, She's a wonderful model. I like the way you even, I, when I looked at it, you actually see her feet, right? Or is that her feet in the, in the image? Or at the bottom? That could be. Yeah, I think it's kind of amazing. I was above her on a ladder looking down. Right, looking down. And if you look at her, we're actually like throwing a mental ball back and forth between us 
when we when I would photograph her. Mm -hmm. So if you look, that actually doesn't look like she's quote posing for a picture. It looks like she's playing back and forth, like here I am. Yeah, it's amazing. I almost get an idea where I interpret it too. Is it looks like she's she's coming out of the photograph, almost like kind of like elevating, you know, <laughs> like you know, elevating up the winding staircase. Right. You know. Interesting. Very interesting. So you you do like to uh, do a lot of uh, creative play. Right. And um, I've seen you juxtapose images. Right. You like to put like montages and a lot of images together. Right. I have time and photos fascinate me. Mm -hmm. I've had dark rooms forever. Mm -hmm. And I used to teach dark room. Mm -hmm. So people come by and people want to know how to do something. So you learn how to do it so they can do it. Mm -hmm. What's your idea? I've seen your portraits. What's your idea or your philosophy behind your work in portraiture? In portraiture of almost any age, age, gender, or whatever, is I like a level of dignity and excitement. I like to see that moment when that person offers just a little more. They shine a little more. They're a little more excited, a little more happy, a little more into the <laughs> moment. Right. I, your, your, your portraits have a very um, personal appeal to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you feel as if you're like right there, you know, with the person and you great, you create a great um, rendition of that person. You get a sense of their, their life, you know, mm -hmm. their, their, their spirit comes through the portrait, which I, which I really like. Mm -hmm. I really like, I, I admire it. I was on Facebook one day. I was just liking, 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 liking all your, your portraits on your Facebook page. Cause I, you know, I, I like that. I studied photography for at least three years in New York. Mm -hmm. So I uh, did a little bit of, of wedding photography when I was in New York too. So I, I, I really am a connoisseur, a student, mm -hmm. and I can tell when people are really using good technique, mm -hmm. you know, uh, photographically. Um, how do you presently want to relate to other people in, in, in the world in a way that would be comfortable and, and suitable for you? I mostly like to be low key. I like mm -hmm. to walk in a room quietly, see what people are doing, see what they're saying. If I have a reason I want to say photograph someone, that's why I'm there. It's just as easy to say, hello, look them in the eye. Let's have them then join you at their mental pace, right. which is rapid. I mean, it isn't like you're going to be there for days. It just allows the other person the dignity of collecting their thoughts. I, we, I saw you at the Troy Anthony's um, fashion show not mm -hmm. too long ago. And uh, you say that you're a really quiet person, but you're observant, very observant. And that's a, that's a smart part because that's an important part of communication too. Right. You have to be able to observe, perceive and of people and know what you're walking into in terms of when you're trying to initiate a conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. And you and I had a really great conversation. <laughs> so I know I see that other part of you too that's very, you know, talkative, you know, mm -hmm. and very engaging yeah. um, as well. Um, uh, I talked a little bit with Tracy about how important it is to be aware of how you communicate uh, in public and how you communicate um, in the media mm -hmm. and how that how that creates perceptions of, of people. Do you think that, you know, when people communicate to each other, should they be hostile and rude and, and, and nasty and probably never? Is that a is that is that a good representation of, of a person? Like, would you want to? Would you want to be around a person like that? Like if, if I was the kind of guy who who just disrespected you and, and yelled and screamed at you and I don't need it. Called you names, belittled you and things like that. Would 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 you want to be around that type of person? Would you Well personally you tolerate no. that? I I live a very nice, gentle life. Right. I treat to the best of my knowledge, I try to treat everyone with with respect mm -hmm. and my kids, whoever. I like everyone to just be nice and polite and look at each other with a sense of, wow, if we all bring the most to our relationships, we're more likely to get the most out. I know my son came by uh, a couple of weeks ago and he and I spent a half a day together and he and I were laughing and giggling and having <laughs> so much fun. You know, interesting. In communication, if you, if you ask the person a question, mm -hmm. right, you have to respect the person's right, how they want to respond to a question. Mm -hmm. So you could ask me a question and I could just like ignore you. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. I could uh, plead the fifth. Mm -hmm. I could be quiet. 
you know, let's say if you came to me in an antagonistic way, I could literally just walk away from you. I choose how I want to respond to something, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if you want to communicate to me, you're just being very, very antagonistic, which I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you are that type of person. I'm just, this is a scenario I'm trying to put forward. Mm -hmm. And let's say I perceive you to try to communicate to make me look really, really bad on mm -hmm. air or, or publicly or in the media, right? Mm -hmm. You are the enemy. I see you as the enemy. And you're saying things to me, right, to make me look bad, right? What should I do? What should I do in that situation? Should I, what, should I, should I make you look bad? Should I, mm -hmm. should I yeah. disrespect you? Should I? Two wrongs hardly ever win. However, some people do win with a lot of wrongs, and that's a whole other topic for another day, mm -hmm. defying all kinds of logic. But theoretically, we should be polite to each other, ideally, for our own best interest. Meaning I want to stay calm, I want to stay easy, I'm happy to get passionate, I'm happy to be excited. Right. But as far as toward a fellow human being, or for that matter, an animal or whatever, <laughs> in other words, I would I go by a dog, I pet it. Right, right. I, I sit in the room and there's a cat, it seems like it lands on my lap. Right. Now, S now in the line of fire, you know, sometimes when you're in, in the media and you're in the air or let's say you're in, in politics politically, you're going to deal with people who um, want to make you look a certain way. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, you may have to deal with someone who's from the other aisle or someone who's um, opposed to you, opposed to your views, opposed to your uh, a person's party, whatever it may be, right? Mm -hmm. And I still think that it's really, really important how a person responds to that individual. I could perceive you to think a certain way about me and through your questioning, you're trying to make me look bad. But the world is perceiving me based on the way I respond to you. They're, 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 they're making a determination about my character mm. based on the way I handle the way if you're dealing with me antagonistically. So I was playing with, um, words when I said just answer the question mm. just answer the question because I can answer your question in a, such a way where I still make myself look good I look like a diplomat I could spin the question I could do a lot of different things you know but there's a certain level of integrity I think when you you embrace the person's question whether you like it or you don't like it and definitely not make the person look bad, not, not belittle a person publicly, not, not dehumanize a person publicly. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of things I've been looking, on, looking at in media that has influenced this particular show right. and my decision to uh, name it, just answer the question. Right. On that note, I'm gonna take a break here. Can the conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald? We'll be back right after our station break. Hello, my name is Deja Bournes. I am a member of the Youth Leadership Program of Hartford Communities That Care. We have been examining the intersection between education, poverty, violence, and trauma for the past 27 weeks and to develop policy and program recommendations. I served on the Poverty Work Group and the following is our recommendations. Organize resources to support entrepreneurs, expand efforts to provide high qualified mentors for teens, place priority on investments in affordable high quality child care and early education, focus on giving people the tools to start new enterprises that will improve their circumstances and spur economic growth, as well as removing barriers to small business growth. Repair and strengthen the safety net to make sure there are safeguards in place that apply equally to all people, Reduce the large gaps between the very rich and the rest of society and make it easier for people to get into the middle class. Also to address the gaps that persist for African Americans in educational attainment, employment wages and income, family wealth and home ownership, health and infant mortality and incarceration. Thank you for your time and I hope you could support our recommendations.
Welcome back to Candy Conversations with Daryl Fitzgerald. We're going to continue our conversation and divulging into uh, behaviors in communication. Uh, we have uh, the wonderful uh, model and actress, Tracy Simone, back on the set with us. Thank you to be a part of our conversation. Um, also, we're going to be giving away, um, we're going to be giving away gifts in this segment of Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald in line with our tradition for the uh, Holiday Bazaar shows. This is actually just the third year we've done the Holiday Bazaar, Holiday Bazaar shows here at Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. Um, Mr. Fred Max, photographer Fred Max, what would you like to uh, give our gifts, uh, excuse me, give, our, give our guests for a gift? People can get in touch with me for a portrait package and they can get a 20% discount. That's great. Thank you so much. Now, how would they get in contact with you to get that gift? I'm on portraits, portraits by Max at Comcast.net. Mm -hmm. Or they can go portraits by Max on Facebook or Instagram. Send me a note. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, Ms. Tracy Simone has already provided some wonderful advice to us about um, um, fashion, oh, excuse me, modeling and acting. And uh, that, that in of itself is, is, is the gift in, in and of itself. We appreciate that, Ms. Ms. Simone. Um, you two have any other ideas uh, about the role of communication and how important um, communication is in terms of arts and entertainment and... Um, it's something somebody taught me once about. I think it's one of the martial arts. I think it's a keto. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong about that. But but it's like it's like there's a flow going on. It's like I remember I saw a bunch of kids and I was going to photograph them and they were making silly faces. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's the best you could. I need sillier faces than that. And they were doing all kinds of silly faces and then they could have their energy with what they were trying to do mm -hmm. and rather than being quote criticized for what they were doing someone joined and encouraged them right. next thing you know i had very nice serious pictures of them because they managed to express themselves and they were able to be heard so to speak mm -hmm. so what advice based on that story you just gave that you would communicate about the role of uh, communication but involvement being i think involved say, it, I would say be mindful to be peaceful in your own self. In other words, I spend time, a few times a week, actually just sitting down, turning everything off. Right. And taking 20, 30 minutes where I'll sit and lower my pulse, I'll lower my blood pressure. I'll just sit and hear nothing, and then I get out and I feel peaceful. And then the whole next day and the day after, you still have it. You relate to the idea that in your center, you may remain peaceful. I think it's a lot easier too to to um, interact with others when you when you come from that space or that place, and, oh. and then even dealing in communication, you know, because you, you don't have to react certain ways depending on how a person interacts with you. You could still go right back to that space or that place of peace, of quiet, of solitude. I was in, I was in a situation this week where. I'm asking a person a question. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm being calm like this, the way I'm talking right now. And I respect the person's right. You have a right not to answer the question, you know, and I respect that. So I just peacefully, you know, separated myself from the person and went into a, a private place, a private space for myself. And that's how I handled it. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I felt so good. I felt great handling <laughs> it that way. Are you, do you have any other input, uh, Ms. Simone, about the value of, um, of, of human beings having <laughs> good communication? Well, absolutely. I agree with what you said. It's important to have a center, you know, to right. be able to be one with yourself. I happen to spend a lot of time traveling, so I do a similar thing, but I'll do it in the car, turn off the music, just kind of get in touch with my thoughts. And... All of us have situations like you described, or maybe at work, someone really irritated you or whatever, but it's not appropriate to Just maybe do whatever <laughs> that, that first <laughs> impulse is. And if you do practice kind of meditating or getting recentered, it does help you to be able to, to respond better in those situations. So being able to empower other people when you do communicate with them, to be able to also express mm -hmm. themselves 
but understanding that, you know, there's a respectful way and the appropriate way to do it. And maybe sometimes that first response that you might naturally want to lean towards isn't necessarily the appropriate one. That first email, maybe you don't want to send that. Right. Because you can make the situation a lot worse. Exactly. You know, you, you make me think too of uh, Ms. Simone, how, you know, people are using social media a certain way and they're communicating and particularly people who are trying to be a part of the arts and entertainment industry and want to be a part of the professional part of the arts and entertainment industry. And I don't know if they're counting the cost to what they're saying. You know, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm 100% for freedom of expression. So I'm never going to criticize a person for, let's say, you know, if they want to rant, if they want to scream at the top of their lungs, if they want to holler, if they want to use expletives, if they want to, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the one, I'm a free speech advocate. I'm not going to say, oh, silence that person, put a bit on their mouth or anything like that. But I do understand that the way you say things, they're, be, they're being, you're being, people are perceiving you or making perceptions about you. And there's ways to do things that's appropriate and in his way, things that's inappropriate. And there are people who I think are not really counting the cost of how it's hurting their career in the sight of people who are industry professionals. I completely agree. Because you're bringing their personal, a lot of their personal information, things that go on with their families and things that's going on and, and naming names and and, and there are industry people that's looking at that stuff on social media and saying, what is this? This person's a loose wire? Or, you know, how can we have this person on our set? Is he or she going to take directions well on set? You know, I mean, are they going to be counterproductive to the process, to the production? People don't understand the <laughs> impact sometimes of what they do. And I, I see that myself. I see that with the models, with the designers, with photographers, all kinds of people. And again, part of my life is actually in a corporate environment. And I can tell you, before we hire someone, we absolutely look at their social media presence. So it's not just in the entertainment industry. But I have seen people really, they forget the fact that you know, I really want to pr progress in my career. They forget and then they'll put something negative. They'll say things they, I don't believe, I hope that they don't mean to say online and put it out there where everyone sees it and now everybody looks at them in a different light and it does absolutely cost them with their careers. Yeah, employee, employees, um, employers are, are doing that more and more and absolutely. more. Absolutely. Looking at people's social media and, and scrutinizing it pretty mm -hmm. much to get an idea of the, the person we you know, all they're going to hire, you know, who they could potentially hire. Yeah. We all look at social media. Right. I'm going to meet you tonight. I'll look at your social media presence right. and look at your pictures <laughs> and what groups you're a member of, et cetera, so I can get an idea how to appreciate what you would know. Some people, one person told me that social media is, is a gossip. <laughs> it's well, like it, a gossip station. It is what you make it. So if you right. want to use it in a negative way, you're mm -hmm. going to pay for the, the there's consequences mm -hmm. to that. If you want to use it as a positive tool, mm -hmm. there are benefits to that. Mm -hmm. right. So each individual has to there, decide. There are some do's and don'ts, I would say, Tracy, professionally, when you go on an acting set. Right. Oh, absolutely. And what, what would be some of those do's and don'ts on an acting set? One thing, first of all, always, always be on time. Early is preferable. They usually tell you exactly what time. They usually tell you exactly what to bring, what wardrobe to bring, whether or not to bring props. I'm talking about like on television and movie sets. There's usually a lot of security. Different sets have different amounts of security. You need to bring ID with you. Don't bring any people with you don't explain what it is that you're doing. Okay, so we're, we're kind of held to a code of silence. I may know that I'm going to be on a show soon. I can't say that I'm gonna be on show X. Right. I can tell you about it after, but I certainly can't tell you what we just filmed because if, if that's gonna be something that's on TV. Now I just, first of all, blew my opportunity to work again, but also blew the viewership of ability to see right. the show because now I, let, I spilled the beans. So right. there are a lot of things. There are very strict rules around that. It's a, a lot of times the cameras that they use cost more than a home. 
Yes. So they really don't have the patience or the time or yes. the energy to deal with people who are not professional. Right. Be on time, do what they tell you, listen, and be flexible because sometimes they tell you you're going to do one thing. When you get there, they completely change what they ask you to That's do. True. I, I think I'm maybe I, I overanalyze too much. I don't know if I'm just getting older. I'm getting a little wiser. I don't know what it is. They say as you get older, hopefully get a little wiser. Um, so I'm analyzing all different types of things like communication, like even communication in the industry, you know, like uh, even the way models communicate, uh, Mr. Max, like um, uh, you, you interact quite a lot with different models, mm -hmm. right? And everyone's unique, right? I, I've, said, I've seen some models who, you know, they have a real, they know what they want, mm -hmm. you know, they have a creative vision. They bring their creative vision to the photographer. You know, yeah. this is what I would like. This is what I see. Can you do this for me? You know, they handle it more like a, a business. You have some models who literally pay the photographers. You know, I'm hiring the photographer, you know, as opposed to the model just, you know, trade for pictures or getting free pictures all the time. You know, they, they literally make the investment in the industry. You know, some of the models are branded. They have their own brands. They have their own businesses. That's part of their brands. So it's just really interesting. It depends on how you want to go about being involved with the industry, I guess. And hopefully when you get good advice from people who have been in the industry a lot longer, you literally listen to it. You know, you take heed to it, whether you agree or you don't agree, whether you like it, or you don't like it. You know, I'm learning that I'm learning from people who've been in, in, involved with the arts and industry for like way longer than I have. So I need to pay attention and listen, you know, how was the dynamic? If I was a model and I wanted, I wanted to get some pictures. I'm, I'm hiring you a lot. I may come and ask you to take some pictures for me, Mr. Fred, oh, Fred Max. Um, how would how would that dialogue go in terms of I want I want you to I want some pictures. I want I want to take some pictures, Fred. I I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about getting some photographs for a music compilation. I want to represent myself for a music compilation. Possibly use these images for. Um, an album cover. Okay. So I, I just called you up and that's how I, I couldn't agree with you. How, how do you where, respond to that? Where do you want to use these photos? I want to actually use these photographs uh, on the cover of album cover for, you know, I'm, a, I'm an artist, I'm a music artist, so I want to use these pictures on my album covers and, and, and in my marketing digitally, you know, my social media marketing too. But I'd ask you if you knew if you could show me something similar to what you wanted or the idea of what you wanted. Okay. Now we may end up having something that may morph into something else, but we at least start off appreciating what you wanted in your mind at first. We may end by morphing, I mean we may end up doing shots on location, some in a studio, mm -hmm. some would be just your head that we could then place in other places. Or a picture of you, even like the green screen, where we could put you in various places. So I'm included. As a part of whatever you're doing. But right, but you, but it's something that, right. I'm part of the creative process. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the most and then fun. You, and then you might be sharing with me aspects of the, the technical parts of what you do. Like you're saying, you're giving me different options of how we can use the imagery. You right. Know? And so that, I think that's, that's a, great, a great way to go about it. Uh, you just, uh, we actually ran out of time here at Candid Conversation with Daryl Fusero, but I really do appreciate these wonderful guests who've been here in the studio with me for our second uh, Holiday Bazaar show, 2018. So I want to thank you. Uh, in closing, is there anything that you two would like to uh, share with our viewing audience? No, it's been very nice being here with you. It was very nice, definitely. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us. You too, Fred. Th th thank th you so much thank for you. having us, thank and you. happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays to everyone, and we appreciate you being here on Candid Conversation with Daryl Fitzgerald. Have a happy, happy holiday season. And even though there's a war on Christmas, do you know where Happy Holidays <laughs> was started? 1942, <laughs> Bing Crosby. Happy holidays.